Hello, and welcome to another Canna Metal webinar. Uh, Steve George and Danny Davis here again. Hey, guys. Hope everybody is, is doing well. And uh, again, we're from the R&D team with Canna Metal. We've got our friend Jeff Martin from our MTI group with us again today. And uh, Jeff, I'm glad you could join us. So um, let's just talk about our topic real quick. So this is a part two of a two-part series uh, about our Novo software and how it can help you and how it can help you solve difficult challenges. If you didn't see part one, um, part one is actually saved on YouTube. So you can go back and, and watch that later, refer to that. Uh, we'll also try to put a, a link later when we post this up on YouTube and also in the Facebook comments uh, that you can go back and find uh, part one for reference. So, uh, and again, if you have questions just in general today, uh, even if it's about stuff we covered before, please feel free to, to ask them. Um, so just talking about that real quick, you'll see if you're live in the click meeting interface down in the lower right hand corner, see a little chat window there, please feel free to type us some questions and we'll try to answer them as we go through. Um, and if you're on Facebook, uh, please feel free to give us comments there. So you can ask questions, we'll take a look at those. We'll do our best to answer some of those as we go along too. And anything that we can't answer uh, live, we'll, we'll follow up and answer. So besides just giving us some, some questions, feel free to give us some comments. If you wanna say where you're from. Uh, one kind of interesting thing for us is if you use Novo or don't use Novo. You know, If you're using Novo, let us, let us know about it. If uh, these webinars have helped you and maybe changed your mind about using Novo or using it a different way, uh, yeah. Please, please feel free to give us some some comments about it. Yeah, it'd be um, nice to know if uh, any of you guys just downloaded Novo from the from the last webinar too, as well. Right. If you had any issues with it? That would be good to maybe ask questions about any issues you may have had after downloading. Um, and now would be a good time to ask those while we have uh, Jeff on the on the webinar here. He could be able to answer some of those for us. Absolutely. So part one covers that: how to download it, where to get it. Um, and then also um, some, some basic things and things like easily getting speeds and feeds, uh, stuff like that. So, all right, great. So again, we hope we, you'll, you'll give us some questions and leave us some comments and uh, let's get started. So Jeff, glad to have you with us again, buddy. Good to be back. All right. So it's so, a yeah. little funny uh, for our audience, you know, as I look at you and Danny up there in the upper right, Kind of reminds me of two men landing the space shuttle with their computers. And then I thought more likely, uh, kind of like the two grumpy old men on the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's about right. We won't, we won't argue with that. So, all right. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so let's see, where do we want to start today? I think we got a couple different questions that came in from, from last time, even that we'll get started. With. Yeah. The, the one I had, uh, Jeff is, you know, last time you showed us how to make a tool list. And okay. I think that it would be nice if you could show people, because this is one of the things that got brought up, is how would you go about printing out that tool list uh, and the spare tooling that, that it has? Is, is that uh, easily done in Novo? And if it is, can you show us how that would be done? Sure, Danny. Let me uh, share my screen with you real quick here. Okay. And let me know when you're able to, to see Novo on my screen. There it is. Okay, great. So we talked about creating a job two weeks ago and, and how you went about that and then creating the tools. So if we look, I've got a couple of three tools in this example right here, and we could expand these and see that there are tools and different components in that list. So really easy to share that information, Danny, or to create a printout for the operators on the shop floor or you know a reference in your file, or if you wanted to email this list to someone, you just go over here to the, the job tab and highlight that. And then you click on download report. And when you do that, it gives you two formats. You can do that in an Excel format or you can do it as a PDF file. In this example, let's go ahead and do an Excel format. And when I click that, you notice up here, we have now a red number one underneath here. So this shows previous downloads and I could delete those notifications if I wanted to real easily just by clicking away. And then this one is spinning, letting us know that this is in process. So once that downloads, you can go over to the file where it would download to and open that file up. And 
when you do that, it's just a, a simple Excel file. And the first tab or sheet on that Excel file, as we go through here, it has the information up front. So it carried over the image that we had, any notes that we have in the webinar, the material, in our case, 4340, and then you have a create date and time. So as we scroll on down through, it gives a list briefly of what those tools are on the list. And if we want to see more detail, it creates a tab for each one of those given tools. And you notice if I hover over these, it highlights and I can click on that to open that page up. So if we go up to the top here, it shows that assembly. Right. It shows not only the components, but it also shows any tools or spare parts associated with those components. And it lists those out. And then down at the bottom, it gives us detail about each one of those components, specific dimensions, uh, the wrenches, even the weights of each of those components as individual components. And then as we go all the way down towards the bottom here, you'll notice we have the speeds and feeds based on that specific material. So we'll have feed rate, speeds, the horsepower, the torque, all that information for every one of those tools. That's, that's nice. That's a lot of information that's, that's being able to be exported out. And I know you talked a little bit about the models in there and it showed the models. Um, we can export those models out as well, as you talked about last week. And I know we didn't, didn't get to it last week when we were, or not last week, but the week before last, we didn't get to talk to uh, about exporting those models out and actually what we can do with them. I know you sent me over some examples. I'll pull those up and maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about how these. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and again, where, where we're able to do that is right here on the tool list tab. Mm -hmm. And if you highlight a specific, either in this case, an assembly, or you could do an individual component, you would click on the download model file and you can create that current assembly or those components. And again, we've got either a step file or an STL file as the format. So Danny, you can bring up that file where we have some of those examples, that'd be great. And we can show people kind of what we do with those models and how we would use that information to help us. All right, so I, you should be able to see them now. Okay, I sure can, great. So in this example, we're using an end mill and um, it's, it's pretty obvious, the old adage, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. We get to see a whole lot going on here. Um, we are certain on clearances, if we're going to be able to have interference with the, the holder itself or the collet, or you know, just if we're going to have enough reach on that end mill to actually machine the feature that we're trying to machine. That's nice. Okay, these are a couple of neat examples. One of these on the right is actually a rendering we did uh, we, we had an Esprit open house event and we made a, a Formula One kind of race car here and we were reaching down in to machine this pocket with the end mill. And then on the other picture on the left, you can see we're using our Beyond Evolution grooving tools and machining these fins, uh, which are cooling fins on a cylinder. And, you know, we were able to verify, in fact, we can reach down in there with that particular Beyond Groove Evolution tool. And this was uh, another example with a machine tool builder where we were making a, a crank shaft prototype. And on the right, you see the rendered view of the tools in there. And on the left, you can see lathe tools and milling tools where we would use the x-axis back and forth. And then the c-axis would control the rotation and we would synchronize those movements to make those eccentric features. Um, really neat to be able to check those clearances and be able to verify. And, you know, in the case, most of my jobs working with the customers of the machine tool builders is to work on turnkey projects, but for many end users, being able to show them exactly that the tools, how they're going to work with the model, you can verify clearances, not only on the model of the part, but also the model of the fixture and use those files together. Uh, just to, to have a level of certainty that this will or will not work. Yeah, I think this model that we have up now is a really good example of that. Yes, Danny, this is kind of neat. And we've got a couple, three slides that, that illustrate this. Um, you know, you can see in, in the, 
on the slide on the left is a rendered view of the tool reaching in, and we're really getting close there. And if you look at the cross section, we're seeing the drill go in there and we have clearance. And then if you look at the drill that's coming down uh, perpendicular to center line, you notice we're getting really close. We're about 23 thousandths away is all we had for clearance, but we know that's gonna be enough to machine the part and get the features on those, those uh, holes through the part. And we're able to see that very, very clearly. Yeah. Here again, this is another example where on the right, you can see we're verifying clearance to be able to have the, the movement with that back counter grooving tool to be able to make clearance and clear the, the smaller diameter bore and retract the boring bar in Z and know that we're not going to have interference. And again, we're able to validate that very quickly. This lathe example shows a couple of different scenarios we, we ran just by exporting different models from Novo. The one on the right being a CNMG, not being able to reach quite far enough into that small 458 diameter. So we had gone in with a, another geometry boring bar tool um, and we could use a V style or D style or different scenarios to see what, it, what it's gonna look like. Is it gonna have enough clearance to actually make that feature or machine that part? And in this case, Danny, you, you probably have a, a near and dear to your heart on these. These end mills um, on the solid end mill component are actually made in Asheboro, North Carolina, the only factory in the world for Kennemel that makes the solid ceramic end mills. Mm -hmm. And then you notice we have a tapered RV end mill on the right where we can actually check where the tangency points are, the clearance points, and verify how the tool and the model are going to interact together. Very nice. Very, very cool. You know, the one neat thing about that too, guys, is it's very easy to download these models from Novo and it's very quick. So to try multiple scenarios is something that, that's encouraged. Uh, mm -hmm. What previously would take a long time to do is very easy to do with this software. Jeff, why don't we get you to show share your screen one more time and, and just show again how you would download those models real quick if you don't okay. mind. all right if you let's see here and while you're pulling it up just for the audience out there um if you're watching on facebook or if you're watching later on, on youtube uh where our cameras are may obscure some of, of his screen um if so you know just look up under there you'll see a, a kind of metal logo up at the right hand side and some of these drop downs are right there beside it. But we'll do a, try to do a good job showing that. Uh, also, while Jeff's pulling this up, we had one one question come in, just a, a kind of an easy question about our our computer monitors here. You know, and why do they say Kenna Metal? Well, one is is we're Kenna Metal guys. We we love Kenna Metal and we like to show it off. But um, you know, another thing just to think about is is how. Um, widely cutting tools are used so yep this is these are plastic components and and other components in but let's say even this housing is going to come from a mold right, right it's right. an injection molded part and that mold would have been milled out with a series of end mills so there's so many different ways that our tooling is used and that's a kind of a cool thing even to sit here and look around the office and think about you know how many things either were directly made with tooling or indirectly made with tooling, which is which is pretty neat. So, all right, Jeff, walk us through that real quick, buddy. All right, you're, you're able to see the screen. So I'll pull up a, a tool on our list. And I had one here as an example where we can modify those dimensions and change those dimensions. So if you look up here, there's a, a, a scale and an edit dimension. And we can go in here and move these sliders, or we could actually put a dimension in here, like 20 millimeters, and it will go to that dimension. I'm going to also open up the 3D viewer so that we can see this as we do it. And you'll notice when I get below the blue arrow, we come up with a pop-up here, and it tells us there's a full length of the gripping board must be maintained to achieve maximum accuracy and safety. If we get below two-thirds of that shank, I call it grip, we're going to have a problem and we could possibly damage the tool or again, we could have run out in positional accuracy. So um, it, it allows us some smarts within the software to not go beyond the boundaries without knowing that. 
Now, based on that, let me give an example here. If we actually move this tool out um, further than this, and I'll put a dimension in here and just we'll take a look and see where this, what this looks like when we do this. We can use an example that wouldn't necessarily be doable in a machining environment, but you can see the tool, if I zoom in, is not even in the holder. So if we were to download this model right now, this is exactly how it would be imported into a CAM or CAD system. So that's something to be aware. Um, and again, we can change this very easily. We come back and we could either set this back to the default or we could edit other components of that. If I left that at that dimension and we also changed maybe the call it. If I click all here, we'll see the additional components of that assembly. So if I put a dimension in here and we say, okay, we'll see that kind of like an exploded view of the tool, if you will. So as we move this out even further, we could change it even more so. So we keep stretching this tool out. And um, again, that, that will be the, the gauge length that is set in the solid model as we, uh, as we attempt to download that model. So these are things to be aware. And you know whatever that is set to is, is going to be where that, that model data actually is. So it'd be nice to be able to adjust it like that. So you, when you do export it out, you can use it for checking clearances like we illustrated a while ago. So, <clears throat> Talking about exporting out, can we can we send this information you know to a directly to a CNC machine? Is that a possibility within Novo? Yeah, it sure is. You can do um, the the entire job, which is inclusive of all of the uh, the information, which includes not just the tools, Danny, but you're going to have speeds and feeds awesome. data, horsepower data, the geometry of those given tools. All that information can be shared really easily across other systems within uh, Novo. If you go to the front tab here and you notice right next to what we just did to download report first thing, you have an export file and the file type will parallel these manufacturers. So you have both machine tool builders such as Mazak and you also have CAM folks like Esprit and Mastercam. And then you also even have inventory uh, possibilities like the Kenamental Tool Boss inventory and other manufacturers. And this file uh, will be a zip file comprised of multiple file types. So in this example, we could do Mazak and uh, select that. And you notice again, we have a red download arrow up here. So when we come up here, we see that it's exporting the job housing example. So that's being exported. And those files will go into the directory that you choose after they're downloaded. For example, when we did the housing, we just click here and then we select the subdirectory that we would want this to go into and just save that like you would any Windows file. So it's pretty straightforward on how to share that. So now this is complete. We have a two, the red has gone away and we come down here and we see this is the tool that was just downloaded or the file rather. And we can put that in the same file and say save. And if we were to go over and open that file, it's a zip file, for the Mazak machine. We'll notice we have an XML file. We have a model file. And this again is those step files for the different tools, the collision step files. And then I can go back again and look and there'll also be image files that their control can utilize. So we can open up one of these image files and see what they look like. So in this example, this is a reamer. So we're looking at the front of a reamer with some of those dimensions. So there's a lot of information that's, that's being shared across these platforms uh, very quickly, which is a whole lot more accurate and again gives you the option to try different what if scenarios very quickly. Nice. Is that what you were kind of looking for, Danny? Yeah, or do you have? That looks great. I mean, I, I see that being a 
a huge time saver for for um, for people out there. Yeah, that's really good. So another question, Jeff, if if I've got a particular CNC machine, and so let's say, you know, tool blocks around the turret, so kind of like the turret adaptive clamping units, is there, are those in Novo? Is there something I can find a particular um, unit for my machine and, and be able to look at that uh, assembled? Yeah, that's, that's something we, we have access to lots of manufacturers. So if you go into the search and you search by a product family and you go under systems, You'll notice all the way over here on the, the left, we have something called turret adaptive clamping units. And when you pull those up, you see different manufacturers of your machine tools. So if we were to pick Haas, for example, and come down here and look at a DS30Y, we have both static, and this shows some of those that are both radial and axial. And then also we have driven units. And again, those are either axial or radial. And the reason you see two here, some have high pressure coolant, some do not. So if we were to pick one of these, we could also work this backwards a little bit, Steve. We could take this number and copy it. And the way I've done that, I've just right clicked on the material number and I copy that text. And then if we go back in and we're looking at some of these turret adaptive units from the main page, I can search by that number very quickly see all the machines, not only the Haas machines, but these also fit Doosan, Washion, and also the Hyundai Wea machines. So we could pick one of these other machines. And again, that same turret adaptive unit applies to all of those. So we could build this assembly out very quickly and select it. Probably the next step we would do with this, since it's an ER turret, is we would add a collet. We come down here and look, and we have inch ER collets, and we could choose between metric or inch but with the selector. And in this case, I'm just going to pick a half inch collet. And then kind of as a review from a few weeks ago, if we wanted to add a tool item, we could search even with a string of characters, like we talked about the KOR style roughing tool. We could just type in KOR here. And very quickly, it's going to list all of those half-inch KOR tools. And we could, again, filter this down to the shank style and say that we want a cylindrical shank. And all of a sudden, we're going to down to two tools. So I'm going to go with a three times length and add that tool to the assembly. And again, over here on the right, and I'm going to move this, hopefully everyone can see, there's a bar over here that says 3D viewer. When I click that, it allows me to view that assembly. So I can see we have the turret adaptive unit, in this case, a driven unit that mm -hmm. is radial. And then we also have the, uh, the tool and the call it the whole assembly together. That's really nice. It is. So I know you and I were talking the other day, Jeff, about, you know, being able to import in a, a part model, and from that model, um, Nova would generate the tool list for us. And I thought that was, you know, a really great tool uh, in Nova that I was not even aware that we had. Uh, so I think it'd be good if you could maybe talk to uh, talk a little bit about that, about how if we have a part model, how it can you know generate that tool list for us. Sure, Danny. It, this is a really powerful feature within uh, Novo and. And we've worked with Esprit to actually create these XML files within Esprit as an export. So that if we come over here and we look at the Features tab, we notice there are no features to display. There's nothing here. So we need to get that information from that part model. And that's a simple file export in Esprit as an XML file. So once that file is created, I simply come over here and I click on the Import From File. And when I do that, I have this example as a housing, and I'll pull this in. You watch how quickly that information is brought into Novo. I have a pocket, I have a chain, and I have several holes, eight different holes that were brought in in just a matter of seconds. So what these features allow us to do is very quickly create a selection opportunity within the tool advisor. 
So if I were to click on, for example, this pocket feature, we could click edit now, or I can double click on this. It does the same thing. It opens the tool advisor and it populates all that information from the XML file about that particular feature from the solid model. So we've carried over our 4340 material from the job information. So that's gonna help us select the correct tools, edge preps, it will also select the proper speeds, feeds and horsepower data. We populated all of these details from the model. So the next thing I could do, I could go in and change this and filter this. I'm just gonna have the software continue with what features and information was provided from the solid model. And when we come back, we have two strategies. We could do it with a single tool or a finish and a rough. I'm gonna use the tool, two tool strategy. And you notice we have the finished wall, we have two options. And then on the rough tool, we actually have 84 different possibilities. And again, little review from two weeks ago, we could filter this based on any criteria we wanted, in this case, a part number, we could come over here and filter the grade. In this case, I, I have familiarity as a customer and I wanna use KCP30, so maybe I select that as a filter, and then I can choose one of these two tools. So we'll choose this tool and we'll tell the software to add those two tools to our list of tools. And you'll notice when we do this, it will populate two places. It's going to show us on the features tab. Now below that pocket feature, we have a rough mill and we also have a finish mill as a solid carbide mill. Those items are also duplicated over here in our tool list. So when I come over here, those same two items reside here. So let's do one more of those real quick and I'll show you how easy this is. Again, we're on the features tab. And I'm going to select this chain feature by double clicking it. It populates the advisor. It shows us what we're going to do. We say continue. And it comes back with our strategy of a single tool to machine that face. So it's really pretty quick, pretty easy to do that. You can always go back and you can make changes. If we only wanted to see, for example, inch tools, we could make that change here and then say continue. And it comes back again with that strategy. And we can add that tool very quickly to that list of tools that we have. So again, this is defaulting to the fastest way to machine the part first, which is a high feed cutter. And as we look down through this list, we have face mills and lots of options. So, you know, being able to do this before having a software would require tons of time looking through catalogs. And I've found even being around the tools for as many years as we have, Danny, that having us show us different options is really useful at times. It, it yeah, kind of it has a big benefit in, in pricing a part too. I mean, if, if you're, you've got a part that you want to figure out, uh, you know, what tool you need that you could use that to get you a good, quick uh, cost apart. Because you have the speeds and feeds, you can figure out, you know, generally, you know, what your cycle time would be quickly and, you know, a, a, at least close enough to quote the product, uh, product anyway. That's right. Yep. And again, all of these models can quickly be downloaded. They're, they're all viewable in the 3D viewer and can easily be downloaded as well. So these are all, all part of the software. Cool. That's great. So... In those cases, Jeff, you know, you were able to go through and, and find, um, you know, several different things there that, that matched up. What if, um, you know, what if you're, you're looking and you've got a particular feature that you need to make and you can't find a tool that fits right away? Uh, what options would you have to be able to handle that in Nova? Okay, one thing that's really neat, and it's, it's been a lot of development and we've had it in the software and it continues to evolve is you can custom configure a tool that does not exist from existing tools or also even populate that from a feature list. And uh, I can kind of walk you through a couple of examples here. 
let's start with an easy one. Let's show one that um, we actually know a part number of, let's say in this example, a reamer, but it is not the correct diameter or the correct lead angle that we would prefer. So we look at this tool, and you notice when I have this highlighted, we can come up here to configure. So this is, I'm gonna switch this over to metric. This tool is a 20 millimeter diameter reamer. It is straight flutes and then has a particular type of lead angle on the edge. So if we go to configure this tool, I'm gonna to suppose that we need a diameter smaller than 20 millimeters. So we could make that change first by coming in and looking at this editable variable and we can change this to maybe 19.99. And then if we look at the general tab, we can change the grade, we can change the cutting lead. I'm gonna change this lead angle and this shows a general purpose. This shows a uh, um, positional type for non-ferrous and a positional. I'm gonna go with this positional lead angle and I'm going to make that change and then just click this little check mark. What's really neat here is uh, we can actually check several things. We can see pricing based on quantities. Um, we can add a quantity in here. So I'm going to put in one and maybe three and 30. And when we do an update, Ah, we've got a problem here. And the problem I think on this particular tool is I need to log into an actual uh, pricing scenario where I have a customer selected. So we'll go through that in a little bit, but that's where we would create that. It'll actually create three things for us. It will create a quote, it will create a custom drawing or an approval print, and it will also create the solid model of that tool that's specific to those custom sizes. And I can show you what those outputs look like really quickly here. If we look at the quote, the quote will come across and be generated and provide those different quantities, whatever we were to put in. And then the drawing will come across as well. And this usually takes the drawing and the solid model within a half an hour. Usually the quote is the first thing you get. It usually comes within about 15 minutes from the time you hit enter on those. And then you get an approval of print with these dimensions. And you could always work this backwards within Novo too. If those results weren't what you were looking for, you could go back into the configurator and make changes again and resubmit. And it's only going to let you change the stuff that, that should be changed. I mean, it's going to gray out any features that need to be constant or, or, or maybe, you know, it's not allowed with that product. So, it's pretty neat. Well, it, it's, that's a good point, Danny, because let's say you made a, uh, a custom configured tool yeah. and maybe you didn't need to. For example, if we had a standard size that you were looking for, I've got an example here we can pull up that, that shows exactly that. If we had, in this case, looking up here, if we had a, uh, we looked at that reamer was a different diameter, but maybe you want to make a custom from a tool that already exists. So we could do that back and take a look at this list. Um, we could do that maybe from an existing drill. So if we have this drill and we go to edit this tool, we'll pull up the custom configure tab. And when we go in here to change something, maybe we look at the diameter and we're good with that. So we leave it just as it is. And we say, okay, if the software were looking to make a change to a tool that already resist, existed, it would come back and tell us that. So, you know, there are different scenarios that play out with the software and, and things you can do with that. Let's see if we can make another custom configurable tool from a uh, inputs on the tool advisor. So if we go into hole making, and we're going to use a countersink we can put in a diameter of 12 and a half millimeters, give it a depth of 17 millimeters and the diameter of the countersink may be 19 and a half millimeters. Let's continue see what we get for options. 
Now, I could definitely see this being very helpful for step drills and stuff like that. Well, what used to take, you know, days and, and hours to come up with a drawing, you can actually put those dimensions in. And then you notice in this case, it actually comes up and says, hey, there are a lot of scenarios you could use a standard tool to create that feature, or you could use a single tool. Well, let's walk through the scenario of saying we want to do both. So in this case, I'm going to select this combination tool with a chamfer ring. And we're going to just say, okay, that looks good as is. Let's add this to our existing job. And we'll see what happens here. It will do two things. It should create a feature that we just created. And it should also populate under the feature and in the tool list those components of that assembly to build that that feature of not only a drill, but a countersink hole. So when we go back, let's make sure this is on our job and we'll take a look at this. And while that's coming up, we had a question. Uh, we've got a few questions coming right. in that we can take as we go along. So one of them was how fast can we deliver uh, these type of products? And um, it, obviously it's it's different by product, but it will be there on the quote, on the information that you get here. It'll give you the lead time as well. That, that's right. I mean, it's we're a manufacturing facility just like our customers are. So depending on and Danny and Steve, you know this very well because you're sitting in our Asheboro, North Carolina manufacturing plant and, and get to see these things happening where depending on the load on any given machine to create a certain product family, we may have a lot behind that machine or we may not have much. And that certainly would impact the, uh, the lead times for that customer. Right. One thing to see too, though, if we came into the tool list and deleted some of these tools that we had in here, the features are not deleted. So when we do this, if we came back and wanted to recreate those ever, we're still going to show this pocket feature and these tools here. And again, we could delete those, those underneath of those items and then go back in and edit them. For example, this pocket, maybe we, instead of using this rough tool where we had a rough and a finish, so we go back to that pocket feature, I'm just going to delete all of that and get rid of it. And we'll do the same thing for this chain feature where we had the face mill. We come back under the features, the tools will not be there, but the, the features themselves are. Okay. So we could recreate this really easily. We could just double click the pocket, come back in here and this time tell it we want to use only an indexable solution. And then come back and recreate that. And it tells us we're out of luck. So let's change that. We go backwards and we say, okay, show us both. Let's see what we get. We're back to that solution. So now it's telling us you've got to have a, a, a rougher as an indexable or a solid or a finish and both. But we didn't lose what we had, all of that data. If we go back again, all of this is still populated. We didn't lose the information for the feature from the model. And this can be modified as well. We could change these features and you notice in here, it comes up with a dialog box on what those are. So it's nice not having to recreate and start over every time is the, the point I'm making with that. And all that's, it's, it's still there because it was in the original XML that came over, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. So maybe and we'll just tap, you, tap that question real quick, Jeff. So when and this came in from Facebook about where where did you get the XML? So if you okay. want to talk about where where the XML comes from that you import in real quick. Yeah, I, I could show you that real fast. I guess I have a, a spree on my computer. I can launch that. I'm I'm certainly not a real proficient user, so you're going to have to bear with me on this. Um, but I can show you what I do know of it. And it won't take long because I don't know a, a whole lot about it, but I can show you how to how to do this pretty quickly. Um, and while you get going, so that's the first part of that answer is going to be it's going to come from your CAM system, right? So you exactly you exactly. develop your CAD model, you're in your CAM system, 
and now you've got the ability to then export um, XML in an XML format details about that model in, into Nova. So, yeah. so here, here's the model we have, and these features are listed within the software, and then we just download those features. So um, when we do that, we need to select them, and then there's an export up here that says send to the machining cloud, and that's what we would select. And then that generates the XML file. As you look here, it says XML data, and we would just save that. So that's that's all it is. It's pretty quick. It's just based on the data from the actual model itself creates the XML. And then again, we could come in and we could get rid of all those features on the XML file. And they're gone and then recreate it very quickly just by doing that import a second time. Awesome. And, and again, another thing I want to emphasize, you know, you, you can't break the software. Um, it's, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And we encourage you to try different things. You know, that's how you learn. Uh, playing around with different scenarios and, and doing that type of thing really helps. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a very powerful tool if you use it. And uh, it doesn't do you any good if you don't. Good. Um, Jeff, yeah, would you want to take another question real quick? Absolutely. Yep. All right. So this question came in and, and it's asking about how can we add a type or specific brand or model of machine? So basically under our My Workshops, My Machines tab, yep. how could you set up a new machine there? Sure. Let's walk through this real quick. So again, from this, this main home screen, you have the job management, you get into the job that we had open. Um, give it just a second, which was this housing example. And you go to my workshops, you click on my machines, and then you add a new machine. So we can give this machine a name, we'll call this uh, Danny's Mill. And then you can put in a burden rate I'll put $100 an hour. You can put notes in here. Um, new machine. You can have an efficiency. You can load an image, which I would encourage people to do. So this isn't really a machine image. Let me go and actually grab a machine image here. Um, just, just a few of the I beg your pardon? So just snap a quick picture of your machine or... You could absolutely do that. Any any file you can import. Um, so I'll, I'll pick a, a machine just as an example. We'll bring this Mazak machine in the Cinegrex. And then we can do other things. We can add a spindle component. So you could come in here and look and give it detail about the spindle. Maybe it's a KM 4X63 spindle. And then you could have a maximum speed, maximum power, whatever you, you have there, a torque. And then simply say at that point, when we finally get all this information in here, we can save it. And now, when we look down through here, we should have something called Danny in here somewhere. And I think it lists these alphabetically. There it is. So there's Danny's mill. So we've, we'll have add that to this particular job even if we want to. And then when we go to our current job, where you would do that, under select your machine, all of those saved machines under your machines will be available through that. So when we come down through here, we're looking for the one that says Danny's Mill, and there it is. So that will become part of this job that we export. So now when we do a download report, and we do this again as an Excel file, notice this red circle with the one is back up here, so we're downloading that file. 
By the way, we got a notification here. So the custom tool that we made for the housing has been created and that's what this is telling us. So we actually have that solid model available within the software right now we could download from the software. So I don't know how long ago was that that we started that example, maybe 20 minutes? Yeah, at the most, yeah, so that's, that's, that was quick. And this shouldn't take too long. As soon as this gets done downloading, we'll open this file as well. We'll uh, When the download's complete, this red will go away and there'll be a three green and we can download that file and open it up. I believe we talked about it a little bit in part one, but of course, one of the reasons to have your machines in there is that way if you're looking at a particular tool and solution and you're using the power calculations, it'll tell you whether that's going to be compatible, right? right? Whether you need to think about a different strategy to stay, you know, within your, your power range of that machine. Um, that's right. And that's something that, again, is, is being added to um, every day. Um, we're not, we're not there a hundred percent and it keeps growing, but that would certainly be a, a realistic solution is it's a filter. It allows you to look and consider horsepower and not over apply the tools to mismatch the, the machine and the tools. So we try to maximize your CNC machine with the proper tool for the application. One other thing so here, Jeff, that I wanted to ask you about is when you were talking about seeing it, uh, sending the information to the CNC machines. Uh, when you sh showed the list of machines, I noticed that Toolboss was listed on there. So yeah. you can actually download that information to the Toolboss? You can, and I'll show you that. I was just going to show you on the on the report. You notice the last page of the report, it actually gives you information about that particular machine and pulls it up. So that's added to that tool report when we make a custom machine and save it. So, um, Danny, your question was. So, whenever you when you uh, download information to a CNC machine, when you were talking about that earlier, and you were illustrating, I noticed on the list of machines that one of the machines was actually a toolbox. So, right. you can send that information to the toolbox. You can, and where that can be useful is you can look. Under my workshops, you can actually see my inventory and have different inventory locations. Mm -hmm. um, you could look and search to see if you actually had tools within your shop. And this is where import from file. If you have a list of populated tools, even in a drawer, you could have that inf inventory information uploaded in the Novo and utilize that to select from the tool advisor so that when you did a select, you could actually search the tools within your shop to utilize those if you needed them quickly. Or again, within Novo, you can search based on tools that are within the US and look at that inventory first. So wow. that, that is all under my workshops where that information is, Danny. That's really super, especially as people try to standardize their shops and standardize their tool lists, um, but they can refer to that very quickly and uh, try to use the same tools all the right. time. Another thing that, that people can do with these customizable tools, they can also add a customer part number. You look right here, you can add your own alias part number within this as well. And that's a searchable field within Nova. So if customers use their own specific number tied to a specific tool, they can do that. And, uh, that was another thing I could have shown within the, the uh, custom configurator. When you make a special tool, there's even a, a box in there if your tool has special marking. For example, if you had a customer part number you wanted to have on that special tool, we can laser etch that very easily and you can make that part of the quote request within Novo. Yeah, we get that request quite often as a matter of fact. And we, we etch that on the shank and we can put it on the, on the labeling as well on, on the uh, packaging. So it makes it a little bit easier for people to organize within their own shops. Because there's a little faster than the old roll stamp days, huh, Danny? Yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, just looking and see if there was any questions that we missed here. 
It may have gotten all of them. And uh, by all means, if you guys think of any questions later, uh, you can uh, put them on Facebook and we'll try to answer them. And uh, like we said look before, you can contact us uh, directly if you want. I'm danny.davis at kinemetal.com and, and steve.george at kinemetal.com. Email us directly, or you can uh, put your text or your questions in your um, in the Facebook page, and we'll try to answer them. And also later, if you're watching this on YouTube as well, feel free to leave down in the comments. And uh, um, along with that, of course, we've got our cast team always standing by. You can find uh, go to the Kinemetal homepage, find all their information. They'll help you with tooling. They'll help you with Novo, uh, and we have a whole Novo team as well. Available to, uh, to point that out. That, that's a really good point, Steve. We have a, a team of really sharp folks that work on Novo, and when we encounter problems in Novo, that's that's something that they can help with. And you know, if we've got two minutes, I might even show that screen where where we yeah. air a little dirty laundry and show where we have where we have troubles, how we could address those. Okay. Absolutely. Are you still seeing my screen? Uh, no, you need to reshare. Yeah. yeah, you have to reshare. So, I'm going to take one of these models as an example, and and understand that when we started this endeavor over seven years ago. And we have over 50,000 tools, so invariably we're going to have mistakes. And if you do encounter a problem, like I've done assemblies before where I've seen this tool perpendicular to the center line of the shank, which we weren't intentionally using to make a fly cutter. So, you know, if you see a mistake like that, click right here and it says request or report a problem. And we have you know, report a problem, report a 3D model request if it comes up and tells you there is no model available. And I can tell you, I've used this and our team is really responsive. Our folks, as well as the, the companies that we work with, with the software are, are very quick to respond. And most of the changes that I've asked for or seen an error, we've had those implemented in the next release of the software, which is pretty impressive to me that they they do that. And again, that just um, also affirms how good it is to have live data versus catalogs. Because the day we print a catalog, there are additions, there are errors in the catalog. And this way, it's so much easier to keep up with things um, yeah, and have good. good information. Good point. Good point. All right. Thank you for sharing that as well, Jeff. I'm sure that'll be a real help to people. So, just to kind of conclude, again, we said comments, questions, please leave them. Facebook, um, feel free to email, contact Cass, leave them again on, on YouTube as well. Um, again, we had a part one, so you can go back and find part one on, on YouTube and take, take a look at that. Um, again, comment if you can. Uh, do you use Novo? Uh, has this helped you to use Novo in the future? Um, and uh, just to kind of introduce our next topic, so we'll be doing another uh, webinar soon. We'll do it in two weeks. And it's going to focus around chip thinning. So we've got a lot of questions come in from, from Facebook and uh, other user groups uh, related to chip thinning, understanding chip thinning. We'll do that in most likely a two-part series. So we'll do uh, kind of an introduction and then go a little bit more advanced in terms of techniques. And uh, if you've got some specific questions around that as well, feel free to uh, to leave those down. We'll take a look at those and, and make sure we incorporate them, but really looking forward to that. Yeah. And um, so this will conclude our, our Novo series. Um, we'll get ready to move into that, but uh, again, please feel free to reach out with any questions. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us and, and lending us your time and expertise in this. And uh, thank you to all of our Novo team that works on this software every day and uh, makes it uh, better and better. And um, it's just a big help to us and to our customers. So with that, uh, take care, and we will see you next time. See you guys.